Uh, for sections 2, 3, and 2, 4, we're going over standard form and parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, so for standard form, remember standard form is ax plus by equals c. And this can be fairly, if you have two different variables that you're working with, so on the slow it was the soccer balls and the footballs, and you're kind of graphing them with respect to each other, then this works pretty well. Also, it's helpful if um, words. It's helpful if if you're just finding the x and the y intercepts, and you can make a line from those two points. Okay, so we're given this problem, and this is I hope you recognize this as point slope form. Our slope is five. Our point is four. Sorry, well, okay, it's almost point slope form. The x and the 4 would have to be moved around. Anyway, so we want to get from this semi point slope form to standard form, and that means we're going to have to distribute. So we're going to y minus 3 equals distribute the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times a minus x is negative 5. And, oh, I need my x. Okay, I need my x and my y on the same side and everything else on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that 3 by adding 3 to both sides. That gives me y. Those cancel. Equals 23 minus 5x. And then I can add 5x to both sides. And I get 5x plus y is equal to 23. Okay, and that would be standard form. AX, my A is 5, BY, B is 1, and C is 23. The nice thing for these is if we're graphing, and this isn't the prettiest one to graph, but if we were graphing, if we plug in a 0 for my X, then it gives me my Y value. Okay, so if X is 0, this is my Y intercept, if X is 0, then Y is going to be 23. And if y is 0, then x is going to be 23 over 5, which is 4 and 3 fifths. So we could just put another, we're just going to say that this right here is 4 and 3 fifths. And then we have two points. And as long as we have two points, we can, let's see if I can do this. Nope. I have a ruler, so I can draw a straight line. The problem is I can't get, I can't figure out where this point is. Okay, let me try this one more time. Ruler here, and ruler, nope, that's not going to work. Okay, I'm just going to sketch the line. It's not going to be straight, but I can't do it anyway. Okay, so this line right here would be the line. Uh, you just use your x and your y intercepts, draw a line between them, and that, that's your line. Okay, lesson two, four is parallel and perpendicular lines. So if you remember, parallel lines are, they never cross, right? And it's because they have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have the opposite inverse, which I know sounds like the same thing, um, or the negative reciprocal of the slope. So what we want to do with this is first, we want to find a parallel line that passes through the point 2, 1. So what we know is if it's parallel, it has to have the same slope. So we're going to say y equals negative 3x plus some b. We're just looking for a different y-intercept. And then if we plug this point in, 1 is y and 2 is x, so negative 3 times 2 plus b. 1 equals negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus b. And we're going to add 7 to both sides. Why? We're not adding 7 to both sides. We're going to add 6 to both sides. My brain was one step ahead. 6 plus 1 is 7. Negative 6, positive 6 cancel out. So b is 7. So our final equation for a, perpen sorry, for a parallel line would be y equals negative 3x plus 7. And that will pass through this point to 1. What if we want a perpendicular line to this? 
and it, we, we don't care if it passes through that point or not. Okay, so we're just going to keep that y-intercept of 7, but let's say we want a perpendicular line. Then we want the reciprocal of 3, and if you remember the reciprocal of 3, 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1, the reciprocal means we're going to flip it and it's going to be 1 over 3. It's negative, and because it's negative, we want the negative of the negative, which gives us a positive. So y, our new slope is going to be y equals 1 third x, and we'll just leave that y-intercept of 7. Okay, that means that this line, the 1 third x plus 7, and this line, the negative 1 third, sorry, the negative 3x plus 7, they're going to cross at a 90 degree angle. And that 90 degree angle is actually going to cross right at 7 on the y-axis. But That's a side note. And then this one, negative 3x plus 8 and negative 3x plus 7, they're always going to be that one space away from each other. Okay, so that covers everything from chapter 2. Um, I will do, I will try to do one graphing problem as well, or just one kind of graphing example uh, just to review that.